I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cortright, and I am here with the one and only super millennial, David Barreto. Big Dave, how you doing, sir? Doing good, doing good. So this week, our focus is on the fear energy. In today's meeting of the minds, we are going to discuss the purpose of fear. Before we get started, announcement, sir? Yes, so you guys can stop emailing me. We are going to go ahead and announce the November event. Are you doing a hiring? Because everybody wants a job lately. Yeah, that was very interesting. It was very, yes, very interesting. Poor Sandy. Poor Sandy's getting feeling all the the calls. Yeah, Yeah. Sandy's feeling all the calls for jobs. Don't worry, we're going to have a lot of jobs out there soon. Everybody get ready. So, guys, in November, November 3rd, 4th, and 5th, in Orlando, Florida, we're going to be doing an Awakened Connection event. It's going to be Bill Courtright with five other speakers, possibly six. Um, and it's just going to cover everything. It's not going to be a break-free event. It's not going to be just a spiritual event. It's going to cover all five life categories. And it's going to be very hands-on. You're going to be able to talk to the speakers, get their insights, their perspectives. So it's not just coming from stress mastery. It's coming from the experts in these fields. More information is going to come July 1st and the tickets will be going on sale July 16th. All right. So we're going to be, that'll be an event that'll cover career finance. We'll have experts in career, Mm -hmm. experts in finance, experts in health, which I think I'm covering, right? Health. I would. But I think we're bringing in somebody else to speak on health also. Yeah. We're looking to bring somebody else we're have in. A bunch of it's not aspects. just me. It's That's not going to be the understand. same thing you hear from the podcast or if you're right. into a break free or anything. Yeah. If you heard us speak and talk in person, podcasts, webinars, it's not going to be the same. So we'll have somebody on relationships and, and, and even the uh, spiritual part. But now, there will also be book releases. A lot of the speakers coming in will be releasing their new books. And that's going to be kind of cool when we see that happen, too. So, so more information will start yeah. leaking out. The website will be live July 1st. All right. Awesome. Good job there, DB. So we're talking about fear, my friend. you have any fear doing that? Um, the fact that I've publicly gave out deadlines is uh, kind <laughs> That's of a good. motivation. I, I've, I've always do stuff like that. <laughs> and, you know, and that is the event I'm releasing the new book at. So I've got to have the book done. So we've got a lot of accountability on ourselves and a lot of people out there keeping us accountable. And that is going to cause a little fear. And the purpose of fear, that's what we're going to talk about today. So if we look at it, the purpose of fear is to motivate us to take action. It's the base energy of the survival energies. So you never think of the purpose of fear is to take action. That's what its purpose is. See, when we train ourselves to use the fear energy properly, that's what I want to talk about today. It can lead us to a whole new level of focus concentration. When fear uses us, it can lead to anxiety, worry, procrastination, panic, and chronic state of stress. Now, when I worded that very carefully, when fear uses us, but fear's actual purpose is to protect us. If we didn't have fear, we wouldn't survive for long. We would touch the burning log in the fireplace. We would be walking on t- into oncoming traffic. And in humans and in animals, this is the purpose of fear. It, the purpose of fear is to promote survival. That's what it is. So fear was designed. We think we have to fight fear. No, it has a purpose. Fear was designed to keep us within our tribe. And the stress response from fear is designed for us to act without thought. That's what it's designed for. Now, fear is the energy of the comfort zone cage. We've talked about that a lot here. That is what protects the programming of the subconscious mind. It protects you from physical and psychological harm. That's what fear's job is. Now, most of us are no longer fighting or running for our lives in the wild, but fear is still the base of both of the survival responses that we talk about here at Stress Mastery. The stress response is the physiological response to fear that affects our nervous system and every single hormone in our body one way or another. And then the tribalization 
process is the programming that creates our tribal identity. And this is happening the first seven years of our lives. The only thing that has changed over these hundreds of thousands of years with fear is the stimuli. The response is the same. Now let's talk about that because the stimuli is also subjective to the programming we hold within that subconscious cage, our operating system of our mind. This programming is coming from conditioning and the tribalization process. So it was interesting, and this is going to sound abusive, but it was an actual test. In the 1920s, American psycholo uh, psychologist John Watson actually taught an infant, they called him Little Albert, to fear white rats. That's what they taught him. But in the beginning, Little Albert did not have a fear of white rats. He actually showed joy at the sight of the rats and he would reach out and try to touch them. It's kind of abusive what they did that to the wrong. kid, right? No, I know, but it's actually a test. So Watson and his assistant taught baby Albert to be terrified of white rats. And they used the Pavlov classical conditioning. Remember Pavlov's dog, right? The ring, the bell. Well, they used that classical conditioning, pairing a, a neutral stimulus, stimuli, which is the rat, with a negative effect. So whenever the baby reached for the one of the rats, they created a terrifying loud noise right behind the 11-month-old child. Not only did baby Albert very quickly learn to fear the white rats, crying and moving away whenever he saw one, but he also started to cry in the presence of other furry animals and a Santa Claus mask with a white beard. You see what you did? I mean, wow. If you did that experiment nowadays, uh, Watson would be in jail. But, <laughs> but they're showing it. It's this conditioning or programming that causes some people to be afraid of dogs. Like there are some type of fire-breathing monsters. You see people that are afraid of little dogs, right? And they're afraid. Well, other people consider dogs as one of their children, one of the family members, right? I just posted that today. That's it. But this is what happens. But this is what happens. It's these programmed fears. And, and a fear could have come because of a dog startling the child or maybe a dog bite when they were little. But then 20 to 30 years later, the person's brain, especially the amygdala, which we've talked about in the past, it still associates pain with the earlier experiences that happened that they don't even remember when it happened. Do you see how the, how the brain is built for survival? So the purpose of fear is to keep us out of danger or to protect us from pain or perceived pain. So at a recent retreat, I was speaking and I had this great fortune of having a guru in attendance. You know, you don't always get in a guru to come into your into your lectures. You know what I mean? So I had a guru in Texas. This guru was a four-month-old little girl. Uh, we're going to call her uh, little baby Mary to protect her identity. We don't want her to be getting... Uh, I don't want her to get, you know, these Facebook posts and stuff. But yeah. And so that was my little guru. And I was starting to teach a lesson. And just before I started to speak, it was cold in the, in the, where I was speaking and they had just started a fire in the fireplace. And then I started lecturing and out of the corner of my eye I saw little baby Mary staring at the fire I mean she was staring at the flames and the colors with absolute awe you could see it all so I stopped dead in mid-sentence and asked the group what was the baby doing and they all responded she is staring at the fire then I asked the question what is she thinking and it shut the whole room up and in fact, the room shut up, nobody had a response, and then it was, ah, it's like they got it, right? Because she had no thought. Baby Mary wasn't thinking at all. There was no thought. She didn't have, she doesn't have any programming yet. She was literally meditating. That's what she was doing. Now, very soon, ba baby Mary will learn the word fire. As soon as this becomes a concept, she understands what it is. She will no longer see the fire. Instead, she will have the fire program. It's hot, 
don't touch it. I'll get burned. It keep your distance. Now understand that it's during this tribalization process of program programming. Baby Mary has a bad experience with fire. She will then develop a phobia and a program to be afraid of fire. Mm -hmm. So you see how it happens, right? So my little guru right there was perfect. Was perfect because she don't have any programs now. With that being said, if we don't have tribalization. We won't know that fire can hurt us. You can see that fear is not a bad thing. It's not bad, people. It's survival. So Mary's got to be programmed or she's going around touching hot fires and getting burned. Does that make sense to you? We're starting fires. We're starting. I, <laughs> wow. It just went dark. You went dark. Super millennial. Stop. You just sit there. You have to behave today. That was, <laughs> that was the sweetest baby. That baby, that baby was through the whole weekend. She was the teacher. I'm telling you, she was such an incredible teacher. Uh, uh, just amazing because when you have it happened in uh, Minnesota. I was going to say Minnesota. Yeah, it happened there that. too. I had it happen in a corporation in Minnesota once. <laughs> the same baby, you know. So it's amazing. So that that was kind of cool. So. These programs of fear run very deep. You've got to understand it because fear has a purpose. It really does. It's there for a reason. It's there to keep us from danger and pain. And this all comes from the tribalization while we are children. So here's something interesting I thought. Gallup, the Gallup poll did a survey in 2005. And they did a survey with thousands of teenagers to find out what were their most common fears. Now, this is 2005, and I want you to hear these fears. You ready? Number one, terrorist attacks. Now, where did they get that programming from? Number two, spiders. Number three, death. Number four, failure. Number five, war. Number six was heights. Number seven was crime and violence. Number eight was being alone. Number nine was the future. Number 10 was nuclear war. There's a lot of war in here. Terrorist attacks and wars. Why? Because 2005 was only a few years after 9-11. And we were then raging war across the planet, if you remember. I think we were in both Iraq at that time and Afghanistan. <laughs> I think we were both. And this is the programming these kids are receiving so it was amazing that this is what they're getting because they would have they would have been when all that happened they would have been about seven eight years old and so you see you see how the program is carrying now these fears will be carried in to their adulthood unless they release them they listen to us they're not going to carry them right and get this many will pass on these fears to the next generation that's how tribalization works so fears are passed on by the immediate tribe, but fears are also passed on by the culture we grow up in. So someone who grew up in the, the let's say they, let, let's say if we're using an example, they grew up in the big city, right? So let's say they grew up in a city. They will have more of a tendency to fear being mugged than someone who grew up on a farm, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. See, they have that tendency, right? They have that programming. That's why a dumbass Wisconsiner will just go up and do anything to talk to everybody. And my New York, New York, Brooklyn, New York wife looks at him like, who are you talking to? Get over here. You can't just go talk to that guy. Uh, why not? See, it's, that's just the programming, right? And look at it this way. People living in South Florida are, will have fears of hurricanes, especially if you were little when the big storm hit. People in Kansas are more likely to fear tornadoes than somebody living in Vermont. You know what I mean? So I can remember when Andrew hit, our house was destroyed. I mean, literally, the house was totaled. And Alex was five. So if you ever watch when a hurricane hits, Alex went nuts over this last hurricane. She goes, yeah, what am I going to do with this? That? And she goes crazy. Well, she goes crazy because she was in that storm. So when she hears the word hurricane, a million things shoots off in her head. Now, Chelsea was a month old, two months old. She didn't even remember it. But that's the difference of, of the programming. So understand, 
fear is normal. It's not a problem. It's when fear becomes chronic and traps us in the red zone. It's in the red zone where our immune system shuts down and we become emotionally debilitated. That's when it's a problem. Now, these fears can keep us broke. You ever look at the fear of money is very interesting. So many baby boomers, and we got a big baby boomer audience because we saw the latest demographics, right? Baby boomers and Gen X's, they may have heard the saying, I don't know if you ever heard the saying that, what do you think that were the Rockefellers <laughs> about money? Have you ever heard that saying? Did yes. you ever hear that around? Isn't that amazing that your generation even heard that? Now, where does that come from? Well, here's where it comes from. We are programmed that because of the Rockefellers, John D. Rockefeller especially, that money was evil and scarce. That's what we were actually taught. Now, this came from how the media portrayed um, our country's first billionaire, which is John D. Rockefeller. He was our first billionaire. And Rockefeller was, was just pounded, you know, he was pounded in media. He was the founder of Standard Oil, and which he established in the 1870s. By the 1880s, Standard Oil controlled 90% of the U.S. refineries and pipelines, and critics and the media portrayed Rockefeller as an evil tyrant, and it was bad, that engaged in unethical practices to eliminate and crush all competitors, and he created what was called the first monopoly. And that, so he was really, so an entire generation was programmed that money was evil and John D. Rockefeller was its poster boy. And so in 1911, they broke up Standard Oil and Rockefeller's fight was very public. And there were retractors coming after him saying that he was crushing people's stories of this. And then, then came the Depression. So all of this kind of was this perfect storm. And with all of this came the programs that money was evil and that the rich get richer. And with that fear was built around money and passed to the next generation. The fact that your generation is a millennial has heard that is amazing to me because I didn't think it, you're, I heard it all the time because I was raised by my grandparents. So they were alive when that was going on. Now, just to put things in perspective, okay? Um, this man was incredible with charities, but that's not the portrait he got. He spent over $540 million on charities, building charities, especially in the medical research department. Now, if you really want to put things in, in perspective, if we looked at Rockefeller's wealth today, it would be around $340 billion. Um, that's four times that of Bill Gates, by the way. Yeah, and I read that... that the charity thing, I forgot what the number would be equated to now, it's but it's one of the, it would be one of yes. the top donated ever. But he not, but he was never seen that way. He was vilified, you know, and that's where we get our money programs from. So we think that, because everybody thought he had everything, right? So the purpose of fear, and it's just how we get this happen. The purpose of fear is to protect us, but to live a successful life, we must. Every one of us must master fear. And this actually starts by seeing and allowing fear. So I was given a lecture and I was of the knowing that a very important CEO was in the audience. And I gave the talk on stress mastery. And when I finished, I asked if there was any questions. Well, the CEO was sitting in the front row, raised his hand, and then he blasted me. Um, and he said that I was... I was illusioned. I was teaching people an, an irresponsible concept of, by teaching them to be in denial. And then he throws this out at me. He goes, if a parent has a child die, are you telling me they are supposed to just let go and ignore the grief? Now, this is the front row of the audience. And it is the, I don't like to say most important person in the room, but he was the most important person in the room, right? So let's set the scenario here. It, he is the man. And as they say, calling me out in front of the room. And he was passionate on his quest to let me know I was wrong. So here's the side note. I had a friend, Mark was there. He was in the back room. 
Mark Middlestad. And Mark is in the back of the room while this is going down. He's, he's a psychologist and really he studies human behavior. He watches how people walk, move, talk. And he said, when the question was posed to me, my whole demeanor changed for a moment and I kind of recoiled. And then I just went back to normal. And so it was funny because we had dinner that night and I told him what, was ha what happened inside my head. So as the CEO posed the question and the energy in which it was posed from, my ego, Barry, went crazy. He went right into fear. And in a split second in my head, he yelled, fudge. Let's just put the words what he really yelled. That's what he, exactly. That's what he yelled in my head. One word, it was four letters. It started with an F and it was loud. Now, here's what happens when you master fear. I saw it. So I saw it. And all I do is when Barry speaks up, I can just say down and Barry stops. And so because I saw Barry, he did not have a chance to stream me with the fear energy and lock me into the red zone. Because if I got locked in the red zone, then I'm defending and I'm going to fight. And so I would have been I would have been defending my position and I would have came out fighting. And that's why Mark saw the recoil. Instead, I was calm, strong, and connected. And I, I explained to the CEO that it was quite the opposite. I was telling him, you must feel the grief fully. This is why people get stuck with grief their whole lives because they never allow it to be there and feel it. And I'm not saying run away from it. I feel it and then let go of holding on to it so you don't carry it and keep carrying it with you. And so I'm not going to go into the, into the whole thing, of the, but I will tell you this. I wish it was filmed because I've been speaking a long time and you've seen me in many scenarios, David, as a Sandy seen me in all these different scenarios. I have never in my entire career had an exchange like that. It was incredible. It was the greatest exchange I ever had. And it wasn't about winning. It was about him and I were just together. And it was like nobody else was in the room. And we're having this conversation. And then it got to the one point where I was just making my point where I saw his whole identity break apart. And, and when, when that happens to somebody, you could see they don't know who to answer. Because I asked him, which I was this. And I, I don't know what exactly the wording was at that time. But I could just see that he didn't know who he was for a second. Mm -hmm. And everything changed. In fact, afterwards, he came up to me and he said, put his arm around me. He goes, all these years, 60 plus years, I've had this voice. I didn't know what it was. I wish I would have known this a long time ago. He goes, this voice comes up and I have problems. And he starts, and I think I figured it out. It's like a movie. And then I think it's done. I try to relax. He'll start playing the movie all over again. He goes, I wish I would have had this years ago. So that's how it, it came out. But mastering, it's the fact that I didn't let allow Barry to stream me because Barry wanted to stream me. Because Barry did his job. He put me on high alert. The difference is, when you either let fear take you over or you're using fear. Do you understand the difference in that? Yeah. When when it happens now, I was like, can I use this for my benefit? Or is it just irrational? If it's irrational, then I don't need it and I shouldn't fear. If it's something like, you know, like really like, you know, this fear is trying to tell me something, then you can use that as an advantage and then take it as into courage versus like dealing with it in fear. Your fear is trying to let you know, hey, it's time to step up, be courageous, and deal with this, or it's, it's just irrational. Yeah. yeah, it's just being stupid. Well, you know, so Mark saw me recoil. And it was like in seconds. And when he told me that, he goes, I had never seen... He Mark was so amazed. We went out to dinner, and he couldn't stop talking. He goes, I have never seen... I've never seen an exchange between two human beings like that before. And the thing was... The recoil he saw was Barry yelling the F word in my head. <laughs> That's what he saw. It was funny when he told me that. I go, yeah, this is what happened. He goes, I saw it. You can actually see it happen. I go, yes, because normal what happens to people is that would happen and they go in the red zone and they start to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. And then all you're doing is, and there's a lot. I'll, I'll bring that one up again because there's a lot that happened in that exchange that was beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful exchanges I've had in my whole career. And this is a smart, smart, smart man. I mean, a really successful, intelligent man. And at the end, he got it. Because it's all, what we're teaching is it's about mastering fear. And 
fear, mastering fear is mastering the ego, which is stress mastery. So mastering fear, let's talk about some steps. Number one, it doesn't matter why you have fear. It's just an energy. Stop trying to label it. Stop trying to analyze it. It's fear. You feel it. Where do you feel it? In the heart. You'll feel it when it activates. So I don't answer. That's number one. So it doesn't matter why you have it. You have it. It's there. Why analyze it? Number two, allow the fear to be. Separate you from the fear program. The worst thing you can do is fight it. You can't fight fear, people. If you fight it, it becomes stronger. So you can't fight it. So all I could do in that moment was to tell Barry down and allow it and shift my gears out of red zone to green zone and reply. Now, number three, use the let go technique. The most important thing is not to attempt to escape. So let go technique is about allowing. Could I let it go? Would I let it go? When? Now. And But when you surrender, you sit with it. Allow the fear to sit there. It's okay. Because every time you do that, you're breaking down the programs. Listen, as long as you have an ego, you're not getting rid of fear. It's a comfort zone cage, so we got to master it. It's the one energy you're not getting rid of unless you become enlightened. And I hope everybody becomes enlightened. But until then, you have to master the cage. That's the comfort zone. So, number, and that brings me right to number four, practice. Watch the ego. Let go. Practice. This is a practice. These steps of stress mastery are not steps. You do step one, step two. No, no. They are a practice, which means sometimes you're going to get streamed. And then you go back and you journal. Why did I get streamed? So the next time it happens, you have more awareness that when it happens, you can catch it. You Now remember, I'm in a theta state, so it's pretty easy. Because I see Barry all the time before he can stream me. But when you're in alpha state, remember you're you're going from red zone, green zone, flying up and down like a wave. And sometimes you get trapped. And then sometimes you don't. In those times you don't, that program weakens. It weakens. And then number five, you train yourself to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's the key. You're going to be uncomfortable. That's what fear is. It makes you uncomfortable. It's a comfort zone. If you're going to step outside the comfort zone, you're going to activate the fear energy. That's why I said you might as well get used to it, right? And the moment you activate that energy, it's going to try to snap you back. It's a magnet. It's magnetic to pull you back. And you're going to be uncomfortable. So get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And number six, it's all about what I tell you guys all the time. It's personal growth. You got to step outside the cage, put yourself in fearful scenarios. You really want to master fear? Put yourself in, in fearful. If you're afraid to speak in front of people, do a speech. How'd you feel the day you had to do that podcast? Oh, uh, there was thought. I, I mean, it, <laughs> yes. it, it's supposed to be uploaded around one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I started at like six in that afternoon and finished at 1230. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because it is, but you did it. Yeah. And now you know what that feels like, right? Now look how you're different in your interaction with the podcast. You used to be afraid to talk. In fact, at the beginning, you didn't talk. Now it's like you're part of the show. But that's just because you do it. It's not afraid. You're not afraid to talk. You actually spoke at an event recently. Mm -hmm. You're not, you see, you would have never done that a year ago. So people, if you want to get, put yourself in fearful scenarios, do a speech, take a cold shower, try to fast a day or two and not eat. I do it every month, don't I, David? Every I say, I single to do month. A lot. You know, go to the bank if you're afraid of money. <laughs> go sit in the bank. Go open an account. Go do something with a banker. Believe me, it'll make you uncomfortable. Approach someone that scares you. Somebody like maybe you want to approach a girl. Maybe you want to approach a boy. Maybe you want to approach a CEO and ask him something. But approach somebody who scares you and sign up to do a damn coaching call. <laughs> I promise you, I will activate your fear energy. It's my job. Anything, David? That's warm. Boy, you ran over. Oh, uh, you. You ran over. You wouldn't stop talking. Two days in a row. It's, oh, no, it's that damn uh, announcement. <coughs> That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us by simply 
Click the links below, like, share, and subscribe. As always, until next time, stay inspired. I'm trying to catch you up.